Okay, let me show you how I have family history files organized on my computer because people ask me this all the time. So, um, sorry, let me get my, I hate it when the zoom bar is like in your way. Okay, so in my, on my desktop, this is my desktop, I've got this family genealogy folder. When I open it up, I have all of the books that I'm working on plus things that are in progress. And so each of these books has all of the ancestors that I'm following and the pages that I'm working on. And if I open one of them, if I go into like this one, I actually took this person's name out because they're still living. But here you can see each person who has a number from the index for that family history book has a folder that's their number and then their name. And I just have their names written out. Sometimes people have the number and then it's the surname and then the family name. Um, I mean, this the files are basically for me. So uh, I have them written this way. It's funny, but part of this is because as you get farther back or depending on like which side of my family it is, sometimes I forget when I get into like certain ethnicities, which is the first and which is the last name. So I just write them out. Anyway, um, and each of these folders has things in them. So like this person, number three, George Albert Queen, he's got these subfolders and these subfolders have um, different like research documents. Okay. Now I don't have a ton for this person. The funny thing is people get all overwhelmed when they're like, oh, I can't go through, you know, ancestry and family search and my computer and get everything for everybody into folders. It would take too long. Like that tends to be true for the lower numbers. I mean, this isn't a family that I've worked on enough, but once you get into these uppers, you're not going to have a ton of records for each of these people. And realistically, like um, if I was to go from ancestry to family search, a lot of those records are then duplicated. Same on like my heritage, like all the different sites are going to find the census records over and over again. But when I go to the census, I don't need to find them over and over again. I've already got like the four U.S. censuses that I have for him. Um and I don't need to keep pulling records. Does that make sense? Just because like, oh, now it's also over here. Like that census image isn't going to be any different than the one on Ancestry. Like family searches census image is generally the same. Uh, I do have a source citations page. People also get mucked up about this. Honestly, it's not that fancy. Um, like you can see, this is, it's a combination of these were copied straight from Site Builder. I think these were copied straight from Family Search. Um, people are all worried that their source citations page doesn't look like the end of a college textbook. And I'm like, again, the source citations page is for you so that when it's time to publish your stuff or to put source citations into your book, they're written. And then you can like clean them up at that point. Um, one of the things that I do have as I have finished pages, this book needs to be updated. This is one of the books that was just single-sided and I need to shift it to double-sided. It's actually the last book that I haven't done that for yet. Um, so I haven't added to these pages in a while, um, but you can see like, as I'm creating pages, I'm just saving uh, each individual page. And then, um, so it's not like I'm opening the whole chapter at once. I've just got this one page and then I can reference these when I'm making new pages. If I wanted to print this off or put this into a book, it would be easy to do it from here. Usually I share the books straight from GoodNotes because in my GoodNotes app, the notebooks are like already arranged in an order and everything like that but I still keep a copy of each page as I finish it. And then um, these, all of these folders get backed up so that it's on my desktop. And then it also gets backed up to um, Dropbox and uh, to Google. It's not Google Docs. What is it? Is it Google Files? Why I'm totally blanking on what the Google, is it just called Google Files? that's gone. That man, my brain said I didn't need that this morning. Whatever the Google storage system is, it's up there too. I feel like it's called Google files. And now that sounds really weird to me. Wow. That was not the important part of this video. Um, anyway, this doesn't have to be super complicated, but the thing is like, if I'm going to work on somebody's, um, book, it's really easy to not only see, okay, so here's the information that I have for him. Let me just pull it out really quick and put it on pages. But now that like I have a lot of pages for him, even though I need to redo them, like I, I had made a lot of progress with pages for this person, I can look at it and say, okay, so what do I not have? Well, I don't have an occupations folder, an occupation folder for George Albert Queen, um, who I should have one for because he wasn't alive that long ago. And I do know what his occupation was. 
that means I have no records. I don't have an occupations folder because there's nothing to put in the occupations folder. I do not go through and create subfolders that, and like you could totally do makes empty subfolders and then copy paste them into each folder. I actually don't do that on purpose though, because this gives me a really fast, like, okay, so what don't I have? I don't have occupation. I don't have military service. Um, for this person, it actually doesn't matter because uh, he didn't see any military service, but I, I, I am going to have um, a draft card for him. And I don't have that. Obviously I haven't pulled that for him because he never actually saw military service. Um, but that's kind of like, if I didn't have that folder for a male ancestor, then that raises the question, okay, did he not serve in the military or have I not done my due diligence to figure out why didn't he, why wasn't he ever serving? Did he ever register? Was he ever even sort of involved, um, in anything? Uh, what else do I not have? I don't have social pages. So, um, I don't have like, oh, here's a clipping about him being on a bowling team, or this is the Masonic organization he was part of or anything like that. I don't have that. I don't have religion. I don't have church records in here. I think I've got some church records related to his birth, but I don't have like church membership, church attendance, church activity records in here. Um, anyway, again, I think people are like, oh, this is all way too complicated. And then when they see it, it's like not complicated at all. It's almost so not complicated that I kind of feel silly showing it to you. Yet I get asked about it a lot. Um, and then people are worried about, well, doesn't this like fill up your computer? Well, one, I don't have a ton of, I mean, I'm somebody who, if I don't need it to be on the computer, I use it. And then I put it in like cloud storage. I don't have a ton of stuff sitting on my computer. Most of my computer space is here for my genealogy because that's a priority to me. If I didn't have the space in my computer, though, I could put all those folders in a cloud service somewhere and then just work on them by going to. Man, I really thought that if I paused and thought about it, I would remember what that Google site is called. doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be on my computer. I just prefer to have stuff on my computer because it's easy to work like that. And when I'm saving new stuff, um, so I can actually do this thing where I, where is that, who was, uh, George, was that who I was doing? Like if I was to work on George and update the, the folders inside, I would go to that, his folder in Google and in Dropbox. And then I would just drag the folder over and it's going to automatically skip the files that it already has. And it's just going to upload the files that are new or anything that's been updated. Um, and then I also have like, a general backup for my entire computer that goes somewhere else. So if I ever did lose something, theoretically, everything would still be still be there. But I hope that was helpful. Um, if you do something different, let us know. I think the way people keep all of their stuff organized is really fascinating.